So as a mech commander, victory is everything. And depending on the battle value, depending on the models in your collection, you're going to utilize a lot of resources to do it. And certainly the mechs are going to be the focus of your plan. But with total warfare, infantry, tanks, vehicles, air support, there's, there's a lot of options to pull in. And I wanted to layer over that looking at artillery in Battletech, specifically this idea of the long tom, the thumper, and the field guns, the, the different categories. Now, field guns don't quite operate under artillery rules in Battletech, but I, I think as um, war gamers, as gamers, we tend to think of field guns as artillery. So I'm going to lump them in with this video, with this vlog, but it operates under a different set of rules and different parameters. You can have both. You can utilize both. But I think for most games, and this is coming from a guy that likes big guns, I love artillery. I play artillery. But there are some very, very important considerations. Field guns for the buy-in battle value, it's next to nothing, and they're very effective for what they can bring to the table. So we have the Long Tom. Um, this model looks like a giant gun mounted on a land train, and it's got three or four cars. It's, it's kind of a unique model. The way artillery works in Battletech, it's its own separate phase, and I'm going to kind of summarize it. It's obviously in a little bit more detail in Total Warfare. What you do in the artillery phase before the game starts is you pinpoint on the hex map where you're going to be dropping that artillery. And you get one strike for every artillery piece that you have. So you pick a point. That's one of the reasons why there's those numbered hexes. You pick a point. Or if it's a traditional wargaming table, depending on what you've agreed ahead of time, you can key it in on some terrain. Or you can key it in on kind of an XY axis. You need some way to say, I'm going to drop the artillery here. You don't tell your opponent that. This happens in a different phase. So then we go through the rest of the game. So that represents the fact that Somewhere off in the distance, you're firing that artillery piece. It's traveling. Battletech uh, around a turn happens very, very fast. Um, I believe, I believe, I have to check this myself. You guys will check it. Uh, a Battletech turn represents 15 seconds. Think about that. 15 seconds. So the artillery, even though it's traveling fast, it's going to take a little while to get there. What this means is you might see that Battlemaster, and if you can drop artillery on the Battlemaster, you're just going to savage it. Um, even if it's off a little bit because it could deviate, you're still going to catch it in the splash, but there's the very real chance it might not be there by the time your artillery lands. So we see tactically the value of how it operates. It wants to operate in city fight type games, static games, games where mechs, vehicles. They'll be moving in channels. They'll be moving to certain points. You can kind of cluster and gather them together, dropping it in that capacity. Now, of course, you could city fight savage just the entire uh, buildings, blow them up. You could blow holes for your mechs to move through. You could deny infantry cover. I mean, there's a lot of tactical options to potentially change the battlefield. I mean, that's also where artillery has tremendous value versus directly outright fighting it. The way the artillery works, though, with the range is you can have one hex map, then add like four, five, six, seven other hex maps, and your long tom is on the farthest hex map away. That's the range it's, it's shooting. Um, you wouldn't really see a long tom on one hex map to play out, I mean, unless it's an objective. So what this means is you could, in theory, pay the battle value, Say that your long toms, your artillery are off table somewhere. How would your opponent destroy them if they don't move over there? Maybe they've got some air support. Maybe you work something out. But on a, on a single hex map type game, they don't really work with that. If you're playing on a traditional wargaming table, uh, most of my Battletech games are on traditional wargaming tables, then certainly I've had long toms parked in the corner. I'm dropping, I'm dropping those barrages on my opponent but they can make it over there, especially with air support or um, fast-moving hovers. Now we move to the thumper. Um, this also works like artillery, but it's towed. You tow it into place, you set it up, it can shoot. It's able to redeploy or move much, much quicker. Um, the long tom is very, very slow 
with how it wants to move. It's extremely vulnerable. The thumper you can drop off, fire away, pick it back up, and move. But even even this is slow. The, the rules of towed weapons and hitching it, unhitching it, moving it, this is not the type of thing that uh, the battle master is going to be there and you see it approaching and you just kind of like pack up your guns and, and move away. But it is it does have the ability to be a little bit more movement-oriented with how it pulls. And, and the model reflects that uh, from Iron Wind. You get the little thumper thing. You get the ammo train. You get the little tractor to pull it. It's, it's kind of a neat little model. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of things that you could proxy. But it's going to work the same, just with less range and less damage. Now we move to field guns. And I think this is how, again, how most of us envision this working field guns for the the battle value buy-in are fantastic and because they share some of the hybrid rules with infantry utilized correctly um, they can put out some decent damage for the battle value buy-in and done well really be a pain to deal with so the way that field guns work in ac2 and ac5 you pay the battle value this is manned by an infantry platoon, infantry group, and it's it's attached to a vehicle. It's towed to a vehicle, and there's there's rules to to tow it, to drop it off, to set it up. Um, alternatively, if it's an attacker versus defender scenario, you could set it up already deployed in your deployment zone. Um, we see this with city fight. You know, you could deploy it out, but you have that mobility. The advantage with field guns is. Um, Similar to infantry, you know, infantry out in the open are just going to get squashed, especially if it's anti-personnel weapons like machine guns. But if you dig infantry in, if they have cover, um, a mech is going to have to really, really commit anti-infantry getting up there and, and dealing with it and taking it out. And that's okay, you know, if it's a heavy mech. I was dealing with some infantry. I can't remember the last time um, my Thunderbolt used its machine guns. Effectively, I mean, yes, if I'm that close, I'm going to shoot the machine guns at your mech, but but my T-bolt is usually going up against your other heavier assets. But I was running past this forest, um, advancing aggressively with my T-bolt. I had my Griffin, I had my Shadowhawk behind. I was kind of clear in the path, and as I'm running through this this forest area, my opponent had two infantry stands dug in, and they had long range missiles. You know, a nice little speed bump for the battle value buy in. I was like, blah 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 blah, just machine gun them. That's it. Took them out. Um, Unless you have something dedicated, that would have been a real pain. That would have been a real pain to deal with lasers, almost an impossibility. And I don't want to hang out because in the rules, the infantry, even though they occupy that space, they're they're considered um, dispersed. You know, they're considered to be dug in. They're considered to be a little bit more, more fluid. So the rules reflect that. If you take a field gun, AC2, AC5, it's dug in. It's on top of a building. It's inside a building. You've got the infantry rules there. You take one other stand of infantry, um, long-range missiles, maybe short-range missiles, to to guard it, to sit with it. Um, That's that's a nice little hornet's nest. That's got massive range. This is why I think you want the AC-2 and the AC-5 to really reach out and and plink away. Just, Just plink away, plink away. And as part of the initiative phase... You can also utilize it. For the most part, it's not going to be moving. So when it's time for initiative, if there's something you want to delay or something you want to hold, right? I'm holding back with my T-bolt because I want to see what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. So I want to move that later in the initiative chain. Then, okay, um, initiative, I I burn my field gun for my move. It's going to stay put with how it moves because it's embedded in there. And that that's what I would recommend. Um, Certainly a long tom, certainly a thumper. You're going to play it. You're going to have fun. Um, Artillery being usually one model. I mean, I have have three thumpers and I have one long tom. And and from the perspective of an enthusiast that like wants lots of miniatures and will often run multiples of a miniature for redundancy or theme, I, I, I just can't really see myself running multiple long toms. So from that perspective in acquiring the miniature, It's probably good to get it. You have it. It's an option. You'll use it occasionally, but I wouldn't invest in like two or three. In terms of field guns, modeling up or having three, four, or five and and being able to just proxy and say this is an AC2, an AC5, um, that you're going to get massive mileage out of. And that is 
something um, even outside of City Fight, just having some elevation and having some forests, setting up two or three or four field guns in there, AC2, AC5 on a hex map, pretty much range to everything. Um, for the battle value buy-in, it's next to nothing. Now you throw down your mechs, and your opponent is going to have to deal with those mechs because you're being aggressive. They're going to have to deal. This is kind of like the, the classification, threat classification. I don't want you to get free shots at me every turn with three or four field guns, especially if I'm a light or a medium mech. But if you have mechs on the table also, then um, even if they're a little bit less powerful because I've had to sink some of my battle value into those field guns, tactically speaking, I have to deal with your mechs. I'm forced to deal with your mechs. I mean, you know, if you're aggressively using them. So what that means is free shots for me, three or four free shots every single turn, plinking away. Um, that, that is, in my opinion, it's a lot of fun to play and it's worth the battle value buy-in.